Welcome to Men's Network. Glad you're with us. My name is Mel Fight. I'll be hosting today's show. Tony Nazaro is our executive producer. Okay, uh, back in the day, when I first began my work in the men's movement, I started out by lecturing on college campuses, and everywhere I spoke, I told one story in particular. It was a story about my college days, my sophomore year. I lived in a men's dorm on campus. We had tough, strong college men living there. And on this one particular night, we played an interesting game. They, um, they took our birth dates <clears throat> and put them wrote them down on pieces of paper. They took the paper and put them into a hat, so to speak, somewhere in Washington, D.C. And then they drew out the pieces of paper to see who among us would live and who would die, literally. Who would be enslaved and who would be free. Who would have to kill and who would get to live in peace. It was the first <clears throat> Vietnam era draft lottery, and it was, to say the least, it was a bizarre thing. It was a horrific thing. A couple of the tough, strong men cried. Others were thrown into despair. My own memory of this event is fragmented. I seem to have blocked out the part where they drew my birth date. There was a dorm in our section of campus called McKee Hall. McKee was a women's dorm. And I'm guessing that for the women of McKee, it was probably a pretty normal night, you know, studying, relaxing socializing. There was no threat of death hanging over the women of McKee that night. Well, a few weeks later, the residents of McKee, the other women on our campus, held a rally to protest sex discrimination, and I thought, this is a good thing, because that's exactly what we needed, that kind of solidarity between men and women. And so I went to the rally, and um, as you may have surmised, it was a rally to protest discrimination against women. The historical record of this time will show that when young men, draftees, were coming home from war with no arms and no legs, blinded, paralyzed, mutilated, disfigured for life, in body bags, that was the time that women started a movement for women's rights. And I'm sorry if this offends people, but I think it was a morally disgusting thing to do. And so when I began my work in the men's movement, in addition to lecturing, I actually started by filing complaints against bars that had ladies' nights, which might seem kind of trivial. But I think every time I complained against a ladies' night, I was symbolically complaining against that one obscene night, because the implications of that are with us still. Let's be clear about this. A society that can draft and kill only men and then not be required to atone for that sex discrimination can do anything it wants to men. Taking your kids from you after a divorce, piece of cake in comparison. So we're going to talk today about discrimination against men and why it occurs and what we should do about it. And joining us to have this important discussion is a father's rights activist, labor union leader. He's been with us before. It's his second time on Men's Net, John Giambavo. Welcome back, John. Thanks for having me, Mel. And also on our panel is Flavia Prado. Now, men's not invited representatives of women's groups to be on the show. They didn't, they're not here, they won't come on. Flavia is one of the few women who had the courage to say, I'll come on and say what I really feel, and I'm counting on you to Thank tell you. us what you honestly feel. Thank you for being here, and welcome to Men's Net. Thanks for having me. And also on our show is Roy Dan Hollander. A lot of people know who Roy is because he's a lawyer in New York City who's been suing people who discriminate against men. He's been taking them to court, and he's here to tell us uh, what he's been doing and what the results have been. Pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I remember that night. People with low numbers went. My number was 18. Congratulations. Mine was 56. Thanks. I was told after the fact. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning it. I forgot about it. Let's yeah. start with Flavio. I was though. 62. Let's start. We, we, see, but if we had women our age here and we asked them what their numbers were, they wouldn't know about that, would they? No. Okay. Short dresses and see-through blouses let's, to have fun. Let's start with Flavia, though, because Flavia is sort of outnumbered here, and I want to give her sure. a chance to talk first, okay? Look, this show is going to be a show about discrimination against men, but I would like to ask you to start. Tell us what men don't know about how women might be disadvantaged uh, by culture, by biology, however you feel as a woman that you and other women are disadvantaged. And a lot of men watch the show, so tell us what you think men don't know about how women are at a disadvantage. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Well, I think um, 
initially, I, I think we could start about, we, we could start with nature. I think women is in, is in great disadvantage by nature uh, when it comes, to, you know, to, uh, we're just born with less, um, how do I put this? I, I, I just believe that um, women had a lot more to, have a lot more to deal with. Is it biological? Men. Biological. Well, why don't you yeah. give us some examples of? Well, that. I feel like, um, you know, there, I could I could have a list of things. Well, tell us a few things. That you, you know, think. I think if if a man had to deal with um, periods and 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 giving birth, which I personally think is a gift, but th there's a lot that comes with it. You know, the, the your body changes and and you're a different person afterwards. I think the maintenance of being a woman. It's it's you can't compare to uh, you know to what a men have to go through. I know that the issue here is much deeper than than you know makeup and waxing, but um, I believe that um, you know everyone is victim of discrimination, and there there are many ways to look at this. Do you think if I were to say this as a man, I would probably be shouted down for it? But do you think that? Um, some of the anger that women feel for men has to do with pregnancy and menstruation? I mean, does that account for some of the anger that women feel? You well, mentioned it, so that's why I'm asking. I can only speak for myself, and I honestly think that, um, you know, it's shown by culture and, and, and history that women have always held uh, a lower position in, in society, you know. When it, when it comes to the workplace or, you know, it's, it's obvious. And I don't think men, it's un, unaware of anything. I just think it's many times ignore the Let fact me, that. You know, I, I want to raise this with you. I think one of the interesting things about this whole subject is how we look at things differently. We have different perceptions. So you mentioned the maintenance that a woman has to go through to maintain right. herself as a woman. I think as a man that there are lots of, you know, there are dozens or hundreds of colorful, creative options that women have in their appearance simply denied to man. To be a man means to be kind of boring. So I don't necessarily see what you see as a burden. I see as a privilege. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I never said it was a, a burden. I just think it's, um, you know, a woman is expected to look her best. Um, for example, Hillary Clinton had to wake up an hour and a half uh, before all her male colleagues during her campaign, just so she yeah. could no, I have know, to get, have, I have keep to, the status. Yeah. I, I have to get up an hour and a half earlier, too. It's yeah, to yeah. put on your makeup? Yeah, no, just to, just to look normal. Look, um, just, maybe maybe uh, if, she, if she kept herself in shape, she wouldn't have to get up an hour and a half earlier. Well, tell, tell us this, yeah, and then we'll, then we'll so. tell, tell us this. Tell us, before we move on to Roy and hear what he's doing, tell us how you feel advantaged by being a woman. What are the ways that you feel that being a woman is better? Well, or that you know, you've used your, uh, being a woman to your advantage? Uh, well, I, I think there's pros and cons about, you know, everyone and, and about men and about women. What about you in particular? Uh, well, I feel like, you know, a woman can, can sometimes, at times, get her way using her looks or, you know, and, and, and that's, that's fine. I feel like men have other ways to, to, to get across, across and, and I, I think uh, it, it's, you know, all valid. I mean, you are who you are. And, you know, you use what you got. Do you think one of the complaints that Roy filed was complaints against Ladies' Night, which is what I did? Do you think yeah. that's kind of silly and trivial? Yeah, I think so. I especially do? because I think Ladies' Night was invented by a man. I mean, it's obvious that, you know, you fill a room with, with females and, and you get them drunk. It's, it's just, to me, sounds like a male-made decision. So you think his complaint is, sounds sort of silly, in a way? I, I feel like there's other more important 